Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to introduce the Triumph 900 Sprint. This particular bike belongs to my wife's stepfather and it's been off the road for a good uh, good couple of years, uh, well, at least two years, uh, possibly three. Uh, and he's asked me to uh, do a few little jobs on it just to bring it back uh, into a roadworthy condition. Um, it needs a fuel system looking at, uh, the braking system certainly needs looking at, um, and obviously a good service and a good overhaul. So. Um, Welcome to the channel. Um, what I'm going to be doing in this video is a, I'm going to drop the rear wheel off, uh, replace the rear brake disc, brake pads, pop the caliper off, give it a good clean up uh, and put it all together with, uh, with fresh fluid uh, because it will need fresh fluid. It's been at least two years since it was last done. Okay, thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> Okay then, so first things first, let's get the rear wheel off. Now, on, uh, on Triumphs, they have these, uh, these eccentric adjusters uh, for uh, adjusting the, the chain slack. I actually really, really like them. I think they're pretty cool. Um, and to adjust it, all you need to do is uh, slacken this pinch bolt and um, put your drive in there and you can rotate this backwards and forwards to tension the, uh, to align the wheel and tension the chain. I think they're really, really good. And also, um, with this system, to get the rear wheel off, you take the axle out and it doesn't affect the wheel alignment. So you can pop the wheel out, put it back in, and you haven't changed any of the geometry whatsoever. I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, moving on, uh, what we do to do uh, in order to get the um, rear rear bolt out is we need to get this clip out, which is easier said than done, obviously, as you can see. This clip is in the way of the bolt. There we go. And there's one on each side. So I'm going to take the one out the other side and then I'll bring you back in. And there we go, there's, uh, there's both the clips removed, one on each side. Uh, I'll pop them to one side and we can look at the, uh, the actual axle itself. Okay, on this side, um, what you've got is you've got a bolt um, and that holds the axle together. So with a, uh, a 12 mil hex socket, um, which there should be one of in the toolkit that comes with this bike. However, this bike doesn't have its toolkit um, anymore. Um, with a 12 mil hex socket, <sighs> cool that was tight that felt like it was way beyond the fair uh, way beyond the torque specifications okay let's pull that bolt out and there we go there's the uh, there's the actual bolt pop that down to one side and in there we can see the axle now what I'll do is go around to the other side and start withdrawing the axle. Okay, what I want to do, just to make my life easier, so I want to get the uh, chain guard out of the way. Just one, one bolt at the back, holding it to the swinging arm, just like that. That's one, and this one doesn't need to come all the way out, just needs, in fact, I'll take it all the way out. Take it all the way out, just like so. Right, there we go. It's completely off. And that's out of the way. It just makes our life easier um, when it comes to taking the chain off the wheel. Okay, next then, we'll uh, withdraw the axle and get the brake caliper out of the way. Right. That's the bolt out. What I'm going to do first, before I try and withdraw the axle, is I am going to just crack off the brake caliper and move it out of the way because that will make our life easier and the caliper's coming off anyway because I'm going to give it a good clean. So that's one caliper bolt. Two caliper bolts. And we'll just pop it off the disc as you can see it's well lipped. And that's stopping us getting it off. Let's just give it a Mm. 
yeah, there's a hell of a lip on that disc. There's actually loads of meat on those pads, but um, obviously we've got a new set anyway, so um, it'd be uh, it'd be daft not to change them. Okay, let's just move that over there. Right then, let's get the uh, let's get the axle out. Okay, what I need to do now is just support the weight of the wheel and we've drawn the axle and that clanking noise you heard was the carrier for the brake caliper there we are there's the axle and there's the caliper carrier what we need to do now just move the just move the wheel forward and unhook the chain Spaces. We need to uh, make sure we don't lose those. Let's just withdraw the wheel. Space of this side as well. Just withdraw the wheel from the bike. And there we are, one bike wheel removed. Obviously this uh, this rear sprocket is absolutely bogging. So they'll be getting a good clean up as well. The actual teeth look, yeah, the teeth look really good. Uh, the chain is also really, really bogging. So again, although there's no corrosion on it, it's just covered in uh, old lube. I'll give the chain and the sprockets a good clean up and uh, yeah but that'll, that'll uh, certainly improve the aesthetics of the bike if nothing else. Okay then next thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to pull the uh, sprocket carrier off, check out the condition of the cush drives and then uh, we'll look at getting this brake disc off. Put the wheel supported on two blocks of wood, keeps the disc off the, uh, off the ground. Um, don't really want to be resting it on its disc on the deck, what I'm going to do just Pull the sprocket carrier off. Have a look at the bearings. Ooh. There's the spacer. Yeah, those bearings actually feel really, really nice. There's no, there's no grinding. There's no lateral movement. They feel really good. And there's plenty of grease in there as well. So we'll keep that, keep that spacer with it. Real wheel bearing. Again, that actually feels really, really nice. The uh, spacer tube inside's moving around quite nicely as well. Yeah, there's uh, still plenty of grease there. Feels feels good. There's no notch here, no noise. Now the uh, crush drives, these actually look pretty fantastic. There's no damage to any of them whatsoever. They all look uh, yeah, they all look pretty they all look pretty good. So I'm I'm happy with those. They, uh, yeah, they don't need replacing, so that's some money saved. Um, okay, um, yeah, happy with those. Well, I'll, uh, in fact, what I'll do is pull all those out, put them to one side uh, for the moment. And what we'll do is we'll swing the wheel over and have a look at the brake disc. These six bolts will be holding, will be held in with thread locker, um, and they've been in there quite some time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit of heat to these um, just to just to soften the thread lock um, and hopefully these will all turn out um, really really easily because um, I don't want to just go at it give it a go and strip these out because they'll be a pain in, uh, a pain to get out so what I'll do is apply a bit of heat first um, and hopefully we'll be successful so let's Now these are only actually done up to 22 newton meters uh, according to the specification so they're not actually that tight but threadlock will uh, will grip onto them okay right then let's get the tool on So far, so good. The 
and there we go. So I'll line all these back out, uh, completely out, and then I'll bring you back in. Okay, that's all the bolts wound out. And then just it in on one side. And there we are. There is the disc. There's quite a lip on that. Quite a lip on it. Uh, yeah, and on the outside and on the inside. One hell of a lip. Okay, right. That is being replaced. So we'll put that to one side. What I'm going to do is just make sure all the uh, mating surfaces for the new disc are nice and clean, and then we'll uh, and then we'll get the new disc out. Turn the all of these up to make sure there's no rubbish in there. If these aren't nice and clean and there's loads of grit on there then the disc won't sit flush yeah there we go that looks nice right brand new disc from uh, EBC uh, full circle it's not one of these uh, ones with a profile on it um, so it's basically just like a an OEM replacement it's a pretty nice looking disc that um, okay here we've got all the information Minimum thickness is 5.5 mil. I don't know what the uh, um, thickness of it is, the standard, but what I'll do is I'll measure it and I'll pop it up on the screen. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's pop it on and see how she looks. We've got these little lugs on three of them and that just centers the disc. And there we go. All the holes are lined perfectly. Right, what we want to do next is uh, get our bolts, I'll put a little dab of thread locker on them and then we'll get them all in. Um, I'll just tighten them all down gently and then I'll get a torque wrench out and we'll torque them up to 22 newton meters, which is what the manual says. Right then, here's the, uh, here's the bolts. What I did was I gave them a good uh, clean up with a, with a wire brush to get all the original um, thread lock off um, prior to application of the new thread lock. Just a dab. It doesn't have to go crazy, that'll do. Don't have to completely cover the threads in uh, in thread lock. They may, you know, they, these will have to come out again at some point, so uh, don't go too mental. Get them all in. Okay, put the thread lock to one side. And let's uh, let's wind them all down. Now, what I'm going to do is get them all down, and then I'm going to go in with the torque wrench in a cross pattern, uh, talking them all up to the specified 22 newton meters. Okay, they're all down, but they're not actually up to touch yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do them all up to touch. I'm not going to lean on them. I'm going to bring them all in up to touch in a cross pattern. Like so. Doing it in a cross pattern helps ensure that the disc is both flat and true against the uh, against the faces on the wheel but it also helps avoid um, applying any undue force to the disc and warping it so oh, there we go all the, they're all down to touch now let me get the torque wrench out and we'll torque them up okay 22 newton meters and let's tighten them all up Doesn't seem like an awful lot, but that's what the manual says. And there is also thread lock on it as well. And 
and that's all six done let me just double check them all make sure I didn't miss any I'm pretty sure I did them all it's that one what, what happened there was that one did actually tighten up ever so slightly more um, so it was uh, there we go yeah it was good we uh, went round again okay that's the disc installed looking uh, looking nice and uh, nice and shiny next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to whip the caliper off and uh, give that a good clean and look at replacing the pads. Okay, what I've done um, is I've whipped off the uh, sprocket nuts and I'm going to throw this sprocket into my parts washer and give it a good clean up. Uh, I'll probably use a, a bit of um, chain cleaner on it as well because that's a good solvent and it'll get most of this crap off. Um, so yeah, I'll throw this into the uh, I'll throw this into my parts washer. And then we'll uh, we'll have a look at the uh, the brake caliper as I said a second ago. Right then, let's get this caliper off. Got a nice uh, nice shiny braided line on this. Um, what I need to do is, I've, in fact, what I've done is I've just popped that bolt through the torque arm just to give me something to lean on. Um, there we go. I'm just going to crack the union on the banjo and pull this bolt out. And there we are. Got my drip tray underneath just to catch the fluid that's going to drip out. Right then, let's pull that bolt back out and have a look at the caliper itself. Just drain that fluid out. As it goes, this fluid doesn't look particularly dirty, so um, it looks fairly clean. However, I do know that it's definitely at least two years old, so um, it's a good idea. Certainly good practice to replace brake fluid at a minimum every two years. Um, because it's hydroscopic, it does absorb water from the atmosphere, and that can severely, severely affect the efficiency of the brakes. Okay, that'll do. Right, let's pop that ball back in there for now for safekeeping. Let's get over to the bench, have a look at this caliper. Okie dokie, right then, let's get these bolts out of the way. Uh, one's longer than the other, the long one goes through the torque arm, um, the short one doesn't, it goes straight, uh, straight through from the caliper carrier into the caliper. The long one goes through both the caliper carrier and the torque arm. Right then, the uh, yeah, as I said earlier, these pads don't actually look too terrible. Um, right, in order to get the pads out, what we need to do is remove these two retaining pins, which come all the way through to here. I don't know if you can just about make them out in there. They go through holes in the top of the pads. We'll get those two out, um, and then they'll both be able to swing out of the way, and then we can remove this uh, this slider bolt as well. Um, and then, yeah, we should be able to give it a good clean up. Uh, and install the new pads. Right then, let me get some tools out and we'll crack these two off. Okay, five mil Allen, let's crack these off. There, nice. Okay, well, lovely. Yeah, awesome. Really need to get myself some jaws for this vice, I keep forgetting. eBay later on and grab some. And there we go. That's the two pins out. Now these should be able to swing out the way. There we go. And there we have it. Right. Doesn't seem to want to come free. It's a good job we were doing this because these slide pins aren't sliding. Uh, what I'll do, I'll figure it out and then I'll bring you back. Okay, literally the second I turned the camera off, it came apart. It just needed a little bit of brute force. It was really, really well, well in there. Um, however, uh, what I have noticed is that this seal is absolutely buggered. 
and likewise so is this that is probably the reason why it was uh it's probably the reason why it was um stuck in the first place it's probably a little bit of corrosion in there it's been letting in a little bit of water so obviously this needs to be uh, pulled apart and also i'm noticing there there's a little bit of rubber just there now that is most likely the dust seal and the same there that's not looking too clever so the key i need to basically buy a uh, a rebuild kit for this for this caliper i don't have one now i was kind of hoping that i wouldn't need one um obviously to keep costs down however um i'm gonna have to in order to put this back together there's the little spring clip there um we won't need one of them that'll clean up perfectly nicely but what i'll do is um pop these pistons out and give the give the whole caliper a good clean um whilst i'm waiting for the uh for the rebuild kit to come so obviously that's going to take me a good couple of days uh to get that so obviously i will have to finish this video then see you in a couple of days guys several days later okay welcome back everyone right what i've done uh in the uh in the time whilst i've been waiting for the uh rebuild kit to arrive which is here um, I've given everything a good clean up. Um, what I haven't done yet is I haven't taken the seals out because I wanted to do that uh, with you guys. So, um, as you can see here, that dust seal is absolutely fragged. Uh, that's the dust seal at the front and you can see the oil seal at the back there. So, what I'm going to do, using my, using my scriber, is just pull the old one out. And the same... For the oil seal as well as you can see the oil seal is quite a thick one same on the other pot and that one is actually split i didn't actually have to put any force on that whatsoever and it's already got a split in it so we were changing these at the right time okay what i'll do is give each of those are good clean out these are the points it's here where your problems lie when it comes to uh binding calipers and stuff so what happens is corrosion gets into these little or water sorry gets or you know dirt whatever gets into these little grooves causes corrosion to set in which then uh, forces out the uh, the um forces out the seal which then in, obviously in turn grips on the piston uh, and that's where your problem lies so what i'll do i'll just give these uh all of these little grooves a little clean out and then i'll bring you back in once i'm ready to uh start reassembly so if we have a we have a good look at the old seals you can see there's splits in them that one obviously broke completely open the dust seals yeah look i mean they're completely shot away they're toast absolute toast so i'm glad we uh i'm glad we went to this uh this extent with this uh, i've cleaned all the corrosion out they should uh, they should be good now Make sure there's nothing left in there make sure it's nice and clean yeah we're looking good right okay what i've done i didn't bother replacing the uh the spring plate i've just given it a good clean with the uh, with the wire brush likewise with the with the uh pad retaining pins they've been given a good cl um, clean with the brush and the same for the two um caliper bolts that hold it to the swinging arm okay right um the pistons themselves they look okay um there's a couple of little marks up here which wouldn't come off uh, but this part here is outside of the seal anyway, so it's not going to cause us any issues um, with it dragging in the seal or anything like that. Um, the little uh, dust cover for the bleed nipple, we've got a brand new one of them in the kit. We've also got a brand new bleed nipple as well, actually. So what I'll do is whip that one off because it's no longer no longer needed. Put that on one side. Okay, right, we're ready to start rebuilding. So let's uh, let's crack open the parts and see what we've got right then here's the kit we've got both the uh, both the new rubbers for the slide pins we've got the uh, oil seals and the dust seals brand new dust cover for the uh, for the brand new bleed nipple and two banjo bolts for the brake hose okay uh, they also give you a little uh, little sachet of grease but i've got a tin of it anyway um so let's uh, let's start right i think what we'll do first is we will start off by fitting all the seals now what I'll do, I'll fit the oil seals first because they go at the back, and then uh, 
and then adjust those after. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give these a light coat of red rubber grease. It doesn't have to be slathered on, it's, it's just to aid in assembly. Just get a, a, a nice coating around there just, just to help it. Some people like to use brake fluid on these, I don't. I prefer to get these in with red rubber grease and then lubricate the piston with, with brake fluid. Um, as you'll see in just a moment. And then we can fit the seal into its recess, just like that, making sure that it's not twisted and that it's seated correctly. And we are actually slightly twisted. So what we'll do, I'll pop it out again. You can see just there how it's twisted. If we uh, if we didn't reseat that, then we'd never get the piston in, or we'd, we'd risk damaging the uh, damaging the seal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that one out, and then reseat it again. And there and there we are, seated nicely all the way around. So next one, again a little dab of red rubber grease all over the seal, and then fit that one to the other side. It's quite awkward when they're a bit slimy and slippery, but it's uh, it is kind of a necessity. And that one went in perfectly first time. Okay, next, each of the dust seals. Again, another little slabber of red rubber grease, and then pop them into their recesses right at the front. And I think we're there. It's got like a little, see on this one, it's got like a little twin lip on the inside. Just hopefully you can make that out on the camera. And what I'm trying to do, I've got it in place. I'm just trying to make sure that that lip is sat facing where the piston's gonna be and that it's not gonna be nipped and pinched and which will obviously cause it to be like the original one was. I think we're looking good. I think we're looking good. Okay, next one. A bit more red rubber grease. And the same treatment. There we are. We're there. We're there. And then just rub my finger around just to make sure she's fully seated in the right place and there we go that's all the seals fitted into the caliper actually that one i'm not quite happy with i'm going to uh, pop that back out again in a second and have another go what i'll do i'll um, just make sure that they're all seated and i'll bring it back in once i'm uh, once i'm good to go okay so as you can see the dust seal is neatly neatly sat so that it's both of its little lips are, uh, are are pointing inwards towards the bore, so we shouldn't have any uh, we shouldn't have any real dramas getting the pistons in. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is uh, fit the other rubber components. Whilst we've got the grease out, these are the two um, rubber bungs for the slide pins. The first one goes in there, and the other one goes on there. So what I'm going to do is, same again, just liberally douse, cover this in red rubber grease because it'll help us get it in. And then it's a case of trying to force it through a little hole. It may go easier one way than the other. Sometimes it goes one way, sometimes it goes the other. Let's try it from the other direction and see how we get on. Obviously, <laughs> the grease does make it easier to get it in, but it makes it also really slippery in your fingers. So, and there we are, she's a coming. And then just pull her through. Again, gotta make sure we don't, make sure we don't split the rubber. 
otherwise we'll have wasted our time. And there we go. Rub rub grease all over the place, but we'll uh, we'll clean that up after. But we're getting there. Right. Next part. Just a little bit on there. And this one sits into that little recess just inside. That, the lip of the rubber goes just in there. It's just a case of manhandling it in. There we go. And just like that. Okay. Let's give the caliper a bit of a wipe down and get rid of all the excess red rubber grease that doesn't need to be there. And there we go. Right. Next thing to fit are the pistons. Right then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a tiny amount of brake fluid into my lid. Just like that, because what I want to do is just lube her up just like so. Right then. Now these can will either they'll either go in really really easily or they'll be a right pain. I'm going to go up for the um, right pain version of events as that's what I expect it to be and if they aren't the right pain then we've uh, we've obviously had a result so bear with me on this one because they can be a right pain and ah, there you go it wasn't a pain what a touch okay same with the other one yeah sometimes they can be a right a right annoyance to get in they just won't go in and they'll just be stubborn and refuse. Let's see if this one plays the game as well. Sometimes a little twisting action will will assist. Sometimes you find as well if they don't if they're not going in, it's because the seals aren't sat right. But there we go. She's going in. Right, there we are. Right, what I'm doing is I'm not completely bottoming them out. And there's a good reason for that, um, arguably. Um, if you bottom the piston right against the back of the bore of the of the, uh, of the caliper, when you come to bleeding it, it can be difficult for the fluid to get behind the piston to push it. And what you'll find is it kind of just like stays there and locks. And the, the fluid obviously is being pushed around by the master cylinder, but it's not getting in behind the piston. So what I like to do is just leave a little bit of a gap just to allow the fluid to get behind. Um, there is a slight recess normally in the bottom of the bores, so um, it's worth bearing in mind. Uh, I find that it, it easier to bleed them up um, if I uh, do give that gap. Um, some people may find that it's uh, of no assistance whatsoever, but um, obviously it's what I like to do. So, okay, we're uh, we're pretty much there with the actual rebuild of the caliper itself. I'm just going to clean up some of the brake fluid that's knocking around here that doesn't need to be there and there we go right we're looking pretty pretty good now next thing i'm going to do is i'll put the uh i'll put the new and i'll get it out of the bag come on what's going on don't know what i've done there somehow i managed to completely separate the two pieces instead of actually opening it there we go All right Get these bits out as well. We need them later on. And then just pop the new blade nipple in. Nice and shiny. And just nip it up. Okay. Right then. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to fit the uh, the caliper carrier. Now, um, what I've done is I've given this a good clean up. These had a little bit of corrosion on there. They're nice and clean now. Um, this port here is um, where one of the pads, uh, this pad here, um, the, the piston side pad, that actually sits in like, like so. So um, obviously I've given that a good clean up as well. Um, some people like to get um, copper grease out and put that on. I prefer not to. Um, the way I look at it is if there was supposed to be copper grease on your brakes, then the manufacturer would put it on there from brand new. And I've had a couple of brand new motorcycles and there's never been a hint of copper grease anywhere near any of my brakes. Um, red rubber grease, yes, because that's for uh, grease components. It's a silicone-based grease and it doesn't damage rubber. If you want to put copper grease on, by all means, crack on. Your bike, you do what you wish. Um, however, I prefer 
to uh, keep it away from the brakes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is a bit more red rubber grease, whack it on these. These I'm going to be a little bit more liberal with, and this obviously will prevent corrosion, but also it won't damage. It won't damage the uh, the, the rubber bushings as well. So that's why it's pretty good. It's pretty good grease for brakes. And then all we've got to do is just slide that one in there, slide that one in there, and then slide both of them home. And there we go. Nice, nice travel. This one here, actually, let's remove some of the excess grease. You can see this one here has got a little ridge if i push it in it should pop over and there we go just like so and there we are get rid of the excess grease because obviously we don't want excess grease around the brakes probably was a little bit too liberal with it but it'll be fine and there we go they're looking really really nice right then clean up fingers in fact, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to change my gloves because these are a bit greasy and horrible. Change my gloves and I'll bring you back in and we'll sort out the pads. Okay, new gloves, nice and clean. Um, Calip is all nice and clean. I've got rid of any excess grease. Right, brake pad uh, spring clip goes in just like so, goes in that way around. I'll just press it into position. Okay, now then, let's... Whip open the brake pads. That was useful. All right, let's try again. There we go. Pack them in well, don't they? All right. Okay, so here we go. Nice brake pads. Nice clean new ones. We can see there. There's not massive, you know. They, you know, there's still plenty of meat on those, um, and likewise on that. You know, these these aren't that old. However, you know, we've done an overhaul of the brake system, so why wouldn't we? Uh, why wouldn't we just replace these as, as well? Right then. So. Um, what we uh, what we need to do is we need to um, fit the brake pads in their uh, in their respective positions. The um, the uh, the one without the tang on it goes in just like so, and you can see the the pressure exerted by the spring pad, and then the one with the tang on simply drops in like so okay now they will be retained in place by these two bolts so we need to look down there apply you can see i don't know if you can see that on the screen uh, down the holes you can uh, make, i don't know if you can make out when, when i'm pressing down on the pad you, you just need to make sure that they're aligned and then what we'll do is i'll looking down just wiggle the pads and it'll allow that will allow both the pins to go through and it's a case of just tightening them up now I had a look in the manual and there wasn't a uh, there wasn't a torque spec for these which I found to be fairly odd um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give them the proverbial nip just like so yeah I found it odd that there wasn't a uh, torque spec for them but not everything has a torque spec so I've uh, I've not over tightened them I've just uh, given them a little nip up now what I'm going to do is uh, obviously um, get the uh, get the caliper fitted to the bike now as you can see it's looking nice it should be uh, should be good uh, may need to push the pistons back a touch more just to be able to get the uh, the the pads either side of the uh, of the disc but I can sort that out in a moment um, so yeah let's uh, let's get it back on the bike get the wheel on and uh, get it all sorted out Okay then, before we can get the wheel on, what we need to do is we need to refit the sprocket. What I've done is I've given that a good 
a good clean um, and it, it still looks perfectly serviceable this is a 43 tooth sprocket made by Sunstar Sunstar is a fairly decent brand I'm pretty sure Sunstar are actually make um actually make OEM sprockets for Triumph so um, yeah decent branded sprocket but it's um yeah there's no there's no hooking it's, it's not gone like um like a shark's fin at all the, uh, the sprocket doesn't look that old other than a little bit of surface um surface pitting on it it doesn't look that bad at all so I'm happy to refit this um, let's get these nice shiny nuts on and the uh, oh here we are get the nice shiny nuts on these are the locking type of nut I can't oh, they've got a proper name I mean, it's completely gone from my mind right now. I'll uh, I'll put it up on the screen when I when I uh, um, when I edit. I can't remember for the life of me what it is called. Um, yeah, I'll pop it on the screen. Join editing. Right, let's get these down. I'm going to wind them all down, and then we'll torque them up. Torque setting for these: 85 newton meters. Got the torque wrench. 85 newton meters. Mm -hmm. There we go. Right, let's. Wind all these down, just putting them up to touch. I'm not actually leaning on them, doing them in a star shaped, pat um, star -shaped pattern, diametrically opposing. We'll call it that. And there we are, that's them all up to touch. Get a torque wrench and torque them. One. Two, three, four, five, and there we are, sprocket fitted. Next job, wheel on the bike. Right then, let's get the uh, let's get the wheel fitted now. Um, what I've got here is the axle with all the components on it and I put them back on in the order that they came off so firstly I'm going to remove the end bolt and its related washer all right so take off the two clips because they go on the ends uh, in the axle once once the um, axle rods in take off the caliper carrier that's its own little bush and keep that there and these are the two spaces for the wheel and then that's the axle bolt so one spacer goes in this side and this spacer goes in this side just like so now these will be a pain because i want to fall out as we put the wheel in but we'll manage um what i'm going to do get a bit of me uh general purpose grease give the axle a good lube helps us get it in and also helps us when we, when we want to remove it later and then I'll stand that up there so it doesn't fall over and get covered in rubbish okay Ooh, there we go Sp spaces fell out already this is um, one of those kind of jobs that requires about three pairs of hands uh, right so first thing is to get the chain over the top of the sprockets all the time trying to avoid dropping all your spaces and then what we're going to do wiggle myself into a decent position I've got to lift the wheel like this and pop the axle through again I've just dropped another spacer on the other side but I'll get that in a second okay I'm up Give it a wiggle now through to the other side recover my spacer make sure it goes in the right way around obviously if you try and put it that way all you're doing is resting it against the, the dust seal for the, uh, the bearing it's actually got to go inside like that and then what we need is the uh, the bracket for the uh, for the uh, brake caliper now that goes let's get the torque arm out of the way in between the spacer and the axle in that orientation 
so it's like so and then what I need to do again lift the wheel and carry on pushing the axle through until we're all the way home and I think we're there feels good hopefully we're yep that feels like we're there okay yeah we're there right then so that's how the bracket basically fits against the torque arm um, and the caliper will sit on here we've got one we've got two bolts for the caliper one's longer than the other and obviously the longer one is the one that goes at the top and the shorter one at the bottom okay then so what we need to do next is fit the bolt to the end of the axle nip her up now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to tighten it yet because what I want to do is get the caliper on and then obviously what I've got to do is I've got to tension the chain, align it, make sure the wheels are aligned, I check the adjustment on these um, eccentric adjusters, uh, checking that the chain's obviously all in line and everything's good before we, uh, before we tighten up the bolt and then obviously these two clips will go on afterwards. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it like that, I'm going to get the caliper on and then um, Connect up the uh, connect up the banjo, and then I'll do the wheel alignment. Once I've done the wheel alignment, then we'll bleed the uh, bleed the brake caliper up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to install the uh, we're going to install the rear caliper next. Now I've got the bolts here. I'm going to add a tiny little bit of thread lock. The manual doesn't actually call for a thread lock, um, which I'm surprised about, but uh, I'm going to add a little bit anyway, just to be a bit better on braces. I need to go crazy and splash it all over the place. It just it's just enough to retain the bolts in position. Pop that down there. Okay, so here's a caliper with a nice new uh, nice new pads. Let's just get it over the cal over the disc, should I say, sorry, and maneuver it into the correct position. Now um, obviously making sure that it's the friction material that's meeting the disc and that we haven't got both the pads on one side of the disc um, it happens uh, ask me how I know uh, and then what we'll do is we'll install the top bolt first which is the longer of the two and then as you can see a smaller bolt goes through this hole just here and there we are, just like so, looking pretty nice. Now, what I'll do, I'll uh, just nip them up to touch. I'm not gonna, I'm not leaning on them again because they need talking. So there we go, 28 new meters. And there's the socket. One. So 28 new is it's not overly tight, but a bit of thread lock on there as well should be uh, should be all good. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the banjo. Let's get it on in the right place. There's a uh, copper washer either side, either side of the union. And we'll get that down. What size is that? 15. No, try a 16. That's the size. And as you can see, there's a little groove for the for the banjo neck to sit in. Just nip that up. Okay, this is torqued to 25 newton meters. Let's wind it down slightly. Twenty-five newton meters. Okay, so that's the uh, caliper fully installed in its place. Um, the only thing we've got to do with the brake is to bleed it, but we'll do that after we've done the wheel alignment. I'm going to do the wheel alignment first, and then we'll come back and bleed bleed the brake up. Okay, in order to do the wheel alignment, I'm going to use my little uh, laser laser chain alignment tool. I find these. I actually think this is a brilliant bit of kit. I've also got the tensioning tool for the chain as well, but I actually don't think much of that to be fair. But I do really, really uh, rate the 
the laser monkey. So what we'll do, we'll, we'll um, get it installed and uh, put the chain at the right tension and align the wheel correctly. Right then, so I've uh, got the laser tool on, installed onto the sprocket. And as you can see, you've got a little laser here. Now, what we're trying to do, the aim of this exercise is to get that laser bang in the center of the, uh, the chain roller. Uh, as you can see, it's ever so slightly towards the inboard of the chain. So, uh, and obviously it gets worse the further up the chain I allow it to go. As I rotate the wheel, you can see that the laser goes up the chain to this point here. So yeah, it's not quite aligned. So uh, obviously the, the chain is far too slack as well at the moment. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the uh, check the free play in the chain and then we'll carry out an adjustment and we'll use the um, this laser tool to uh, ensure that the wheels are aligned. It all is going to be is a simple case of undoing the pinch bolts um, and then once the pinch bolts are un uh, uh, undone is rotating the eccentric adjusters into their correct positions. Now there are there are graduations. There's a little it's hard to make out on this bike. Um, just there where my thumb is, my thumbnail's in it. There's a little notch and another one there and you can see there's a notch on the swing arm just there. Now those are the notches for um, the graduations for uh, you know to so you, visually you can say right that one's at that notch the other side is at the same notch so you're roughly in the right place. Obviously that's almost where you want to be but the tool, um, when I did this on my R1 a little while ago, I actually found that the notches on each side of the swing arm weren't as close as I thought they were um, because the, the notches were absolutely perfectly the same on each side, yet the chain was not aligned. Um, so I had to make some adjustments. So I prefer to use this method than the the graduations on, uh, on the actual swing arm itself. Okay, so what I'm going to do, undo these pinch bolts and um, we'll, uh, we'll, do some, we'll make some adjustments. Right then, let's crack off both pinch bolts. That's one. Same on the other side. There we are, that's two. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to rotate this. This adjuster needs to be able to be turned in the swing arm. And in order to do that, I've got, uh, I've got a large hex head. The problem you've got is that somebody, somebody at Triumph put a bloody great exhaust silencer in the way. So the easiest way I've found is to put that in and then just use a 10 mil spanner on it. And as you can see, it's allowed to rotate tension in the, uh, tension in the chain. And yeah, that's, um, it's fairly effective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same on both sides, just Get the chain tension correct get the alignment correct and then what i'll do once i've done that i'll bring it back in and we'll have a look at where the uh, where the laser sits and then we'll uh, we'll crack on and finish off the job okay so as can be seen here that laser now no matter whereabouts i put it down the chain sits bang in the middle of the rollers all the way down so we can be rest assured that the wheel alignment is absolutely spot on um, interestingly enough looking at the markings on the swing arm there is an ever so slight variation on each side that one there is one two three notches on the actual eccentric adjuster aligns with the notch on the swing arm however on the other side it doesn't quite align so this is why I find these laser tools to be quite useful because the alignment is, um, had we used these uh, visual indicators to get the alignment right, it wouldn't have been absolutely perfect. So I'm happy um, that we've used the tool to set it right. The, chain, the, chain, uh, uh, the slack on the chain, according to the manual, is to be between 35 and 40 mil. Um, what I'll do is obviously uh, I'll put the weight on the wheels and we'll double check that just to make sure it's absolutely spot on. But uh, at the moment, I'm absolutely happy. Next thing I want to do is I just want to Torque the rear, the rear axle bolt. Now that the wheel's aligned, this is torqued to 85 Newton meters. There we go, it's coming up now. And there we go. Right, 
Right. Now, while we're on the subject, while we're on the topic of torque, um, I just want to revisit these two bolts. Um, earlier on, I talked them to 28 newton meters. I was actually reading the wrong line in the manual. Um, I was reading the bolts uh, for the torque arm. That one's 28 newton meters. These two are actually 40 newton meters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to retorque those, um, and then uh, they'll be all good. Um, after uh, after I've fitted the clips into the end of the axle, however, so I'll get these clips in. One this side, just push them home, and then the other one for the other side. that's that in place I'm gonna take this tool off now I don't know I need that let's turn it off okay right next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, bleed the caliper up okay 40 40. It wasn't a massive amount of turning, but you'd be surprised at the difference in the clamping force, just that small uh, that small turn makes. Okay, happy with that. That's that mistake corrected before uh, before it was um, before it became a problem. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we are going to bleed the brake caliper. Now, get me uh, get me trusty uh, vacuum pump tool out. Um, this tool is incredible. It's um, it was really, really cheap, yet it's absolutely spot on for this job. Okay. Put it all together. With this, you can uh, bleed a set of brakes on your own. You don't actually need any assistance. You don't need to pump any pedals or anything. It's, uh, it's really, 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 really good. Okay, let me... In the best position I'll put that there right one thing that triumph did in their wisdom is they uh they put the reservoir for the master cylinder in a really strange place and it's down here underneath this uh, subframe spar so it's a bit of a pen in the ass to get into I'm gonna get this lid off here like that and there's making sure that obviously you've got all the rubber gasket and everything and then unless you've got a jug like this it can be quite messy so you need to get a nozzle in like so get the fluid pouring in being as gentle as you can because you don't want to get it anywhere else okay so Reservoir's nice and full, um, as you can see. So what I need to do now is I need to go down to the caliper and what I'm gonna do, make sure that the nozzle end is over the bleed nipple. What I'm gonna do, create my vacuum and simply Crack off the bleed nipple. Now, this is a completely dry system, so it will take a little while before any fluid comes out. What I may need to do, ah, oh, there we go, here we go. So, that means that all the uh, let's just close that up. Okay, let me just check the level, make sure that it hasn't dropped too far. Okay, we're about halfway down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pump the brake pedal to force the pads out against the disc. And as you can see, she's working beautifully. Really nice. Okay, happy with that. So let's pop that off. Take the spanner off. 
And then what we need, a little dust cap that came in the rebuild kit. And there we go. Okay, all that remains for me to do now is just refit the cap. I'm, hap I'm actually, uh, I'm gonna just top that level up a touch. It's, uh, it's not far from the upper limit, but I just want it to, there we go, that's perfect. Again, let's pop this cap back on so we don't spill any. And then all I need to do, gently feed this cap in and refit. Yeah, cheers Triumph for making that one an awkward one. Okay, so there we are. That is the job done. All that remains for me to do is obviously stick the seat on. I do need to put the chain guard back on, but um, I'm not gonna do that at the moment because I'm gonna give the chain a good clean. But yeah, that's the, uh, that is the um, rear disc, the pads and the caliper serviced on the Triumph 900 Sprint. Okay, um, hopefully you, uh, you enjoyed this video. Uh, maybe you found it helpful. Uh, please give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more stuff uh, from, from Kev Shed. Uh, I've got plenty of bike stuff, loads of car stuff uh, uh, upcoming. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. Um, leave a comment and uh, I'll be sure to get back to you. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you very much, guys. Bye bye now.